It is so good to be with you today from First Baptist Church in Mount Vernon, Texas. We are streaming this, and so you're either watching it, streaming it, or Facebook, or whatever. But we're glad to be with you, and we're we're ready to have a marvelous worship service together. It is different. We're, this is this is something that we're kind of getting used to ourselves. We haven't done this, but I think this is twice now we've done this, and we may be doing this. Uh, uh, again, depending on uh, what happens with this uh, coronavirus, but we're trusting God in that, and we're glad to be a part of your worship service, and we want this to be meaningful, a very meaningful spiritual time for you. And as we prayed just a few moments ago here with the group that's, that's, being, that's delivering this uh, message and worship service to you, we understand that we're standing on holy ground as we present this to you uh, in your home. So worship with us as we uh, begin as we start to sing. We have some uh, men who are going to come sing with me till the storm passes by. And folks, I want to tell you, the storm will pass by. It will. I promise you, there'll be a better day. And we're going to sing together till the storm passes by. In the dark of the midnight, how I halt in my face, while the storms howl above me, and there's no hiding place. Mid the crash of the thunder, precious Lord, hear my cry, keep me safe. Till the storm passes by Till the storm passes over Till the thunder sounds no more Till the clouds roll forever From the sky Hold me fast, let me stand In the hollow storm passes by. When the long night has ended and the storms come no more, let me stand in thy presence on that bright peaceful shore in that land where the tempest never comes. Lord, may I dwell with thee when the storm passes by. Till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Holy fire. Stand in the hollow of my hand, keep me safe till the storm passes by. Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow. we just come to you with praise and honor for who you are for God you are a God of great grace and mercy and love and God you are our only hope and during this time of uncertainty and sickness with this coronavirus we just ask that you would just be with us in a special way Lord you are our fountain you are a mountain you are our strength in times of trouble Lord, we just pray for healing for all those that have this virus right now. We just pray that you would just stop it right now in its tracks. Lord, we know that you can do that. And Lord, we just also pray for our first responders, our law enforcement, our 
nurses and our doctors who are uh, just treating patients and, and helping them. We just pray for protection for them. First of all, Lord, that you would keep them from getting sick. And Lord, that you would just be with them this day. Lord, we just pray for our national leaders, the leaders of our state, of our county, of our city. Lord, just give them wisdom. Help them to seek your wisdom in knowledge and the decisions that they need to make to help us, to protect us this day. Father, we know that sometimes we are anxious and worried and frustrated over this current situation, but God, we just know that you have it all in your hands, that you control it, and Lord, we just rest on you. And Lord, help us not to be anxious for anything, but Lord, help us to pray to you continually to give us strength and hope. And Lord, as we minister to others in this time, let us be lights in a dark world, Lord, that needs the message of the cross more than ever. So Lord, just help us to be lights in a dark world around us. Lord, thank you for loving us like you do. And we just ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. We're so glad that you've come to worship with us. And as we stand to do some congregational singing, go ahead and stand up at home. I want you to sing from the bottom of your heart. Be filled with joy and peace because we serve a living Savior. We can see you as we're here in the congregation. We know where you sit. And when we look out, we visualize your beautiful faces. So church, let's rise up and sing together with joy and strength and happiness. And tomorrow when you go out, shine like the stars that you are. We pray this in the precious holy name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to sing together Amazing Grace. So sing with us there at home and just enjoy the music together. Share with us if you will. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we no less taste to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Okay, Pastor? No, I'm so glad you joined us today. It is unprecedented days, unusual days, but we're just thrilled that we can come to you and you can still hear God's Word. We can still worship together as a church family, albeit sort of virtual, online, but I know you're there. And I want you to know I'm praying for you. I want you to know that although I may not call every one of you by name, I am praying for us as a church, that God would continue to bless us, continue to direct us, continue to give us wisdom in these challenging, unprecedented days of our nation. And so I want you to know that I am. I'm praying for you as your pastor. If you need anything, please contact our offices. Please, we'll be glad to help you in these, in these days. So, take your Bible this morning and open it to John chapter 13. John chapter 13. Or maybe, maybe you're there and you have an iPad or, or you've got your laptop and it has a Bible app on it. Find John chapter 13. And I want to lead us in prayer as we gather around God's Word this morning. A message that I believe the Lord has given me to share to you today. So let's pray. Would you take a few moments right now and pray for me, your pastor, that I can speak God's Word to you today in a manner where you, you, 
you understand and are clear. And then pray for yourself that you'll hear God's word today in your life. Let's, let's pray for one another. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. It's a day you've created and a day we get to come and hear your word, speak your word. And Father, I just pray for your anointing on this process today. It is new to us. So I just pray, Father, for a, an unction, an anointing today on your word and those who hear, those who watch this service, Father. So speak to us today, Father. Challenge us, convict us, encourage us, whatever it is you need to do in our lives. Do it today, Father, through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I got a text message on Monday of this week. It was just one verse of Scripture. There were... No hello, Pepper, here's a verse. No, none of that. There was not a good morning. There was no comment after the verse. It was just one simple verse. And the verse, as I read it, leaped out of my phone and grabbed my heart. And I knew that I had the message that I wanted to share with you today. That one verse is John chapter 13, verse 7. Let me read it. What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. What I am doing you will not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Wow. Dear family, in the midst of all that is going on in our nation, God's up to something. In in these unprecedented challenges that we face, He is really doing something in our midst. During these days where there may be fear, certainly there is uncertainty, God is at work. In these endless days, no, in these days of endless updates on your favorite cable news channel, God is on the move. He is doing something. What I am doing, you do not understand now, but afterwards, you will understand. It reminds me of a hymn written by William Cowper. It appeared in a hymnal published in 1779 by John Newton, who was William Cowper's spiritual mentor. In this hymnal that was published in 1779, John Newton wrote 208 of the 276 hymns that were in that hymnal. John Newton's masterpiece, Amazing Grace, is in that hymnal. But also in that hymnal, there is a hymn written by his friend, William Cowper. It is so relevant for the times that you and I live in. God moves in a mysterious way, his wonders to perform. He plants his footsteps in the sea and rides upon the storm. Deep in unfathomable minds of never-failing skill, he treasures up his bright designs and works his sovereign will. His purposes will ripen fast, unfolding every hour. The bud may have a bitter taste, but sweet will be the flower. Blind unbelief is sure to err and scan his work in vain. God is his own interpreter, and he will make it plain. Yes, indeed, he will. He will make it plain. 
That's what Jesus is saying in John chapter 13, verse 7. Let me read it again. Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Notice two words in that verse. The first one is now, and the second one is afterward. So here's our life point today. Here's what I want you to remember. To understand the afterward, live in the now. To understand the afterward, live in the now. We won't see all that God is doing until later. We won't know the work that he is doing in our nation today until afterward. But we won't see it or know it unless we are willing to live in the now. And that's what I want to talk to you about this morning. Living in the now. How do we do that? In order to understand the afterward, we have to live in the now. So what does it mean to live in the now? What, what does it mean to live as God would have you to live in these days, these fearful days, these uncertain days, these confusing days of COVID-19? What does it mean to live in the now? Well, look at the context of John chapter 13. What, what's, what's going on here? Jesus is washing feet. That's what's going on here. Look at verse 3, if you would. John chapter 13 and verse 3 says, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and taking a towel, he tied it around his waist and then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. There was a room that night full of dirty feet and proud hearts. Because you see, the task of washing feet was assigned to the lowest slave, the lowest servant in the house. The low man on the totem pole got the job of washing people's feet when they came into the house and not one of those disciples wanted to admit, I'm the low man on the totem pole. No, that room that night was full of proud hearts and dirty feet. And Jesus rises from supper, takes the towel and begins to serve his disciples. That's what's going on here. He is serving his disciples disciples he then is our example Jesus becomes our example of how to live in the now we must give of ourselves to understand the afterward live in the now give of yourself find ways in these uncertain days find ways to be a servant of Jesus. Find ways to be a servant to others. Find ways to serve those around you. Hey neighbor, do you need anything? I'm about to get out. Could I go by the grocery store for you and, and get you some groceries? Or maybe you need me to run to Walmart for you. Or maybe just down here to Dollar General. Is there anything you need? I'll be glad to go get it and bring it back and drop it off so you don't have to get out. You see, we can be a servant to those around us. Another way that we can serve is to go volunteer at your Franklin County Food Bank. Go volunteer at the local food bank here in town. It's located on Leftwich Street. And they've sort of had more business lately than they normally have, and th th they need help. The food bank is open on Tuesdays from noon until 2. It's open on Thursdays from 4 until 5.30. Do you want to live in the now? Do you want to give of yourself? Go volunteer at the local food bank. And then, let me suggest one more thing. I am proclaiming today, Sunday, March 29th, Take Out Day. Yes, I want you to support your local restaurant. I want you, when you're finished watching this service, I want you to call your local restaurant and order out for lunch. Order to go. Go get it and bring it home and, and eat lunch. Because you see, takeout orders and to-go orders 
are the only way that our local businesses can operate right now. Give of yourself. To understand the afterward, live in the now. Give of yourself. You see, in these days of isolation, we must make an effort to give ourselves to other people. In these days of COVID-19, it's it's not about us. It is about you finding ways to serve those around you. We must all learn to give of ourselves. So whose feet can you wash today? Who can you go serve today? Now, scroll on down or turn over in your Bible to John chapter 16. To understand the afterward, live in the now, give of yourself, but there's something else for us. Find John chapter 16. John chapter 16, Jesus is still in that room where he had washed the disciples' feet. And he's teaching them. It's Thursday night. Jesus will be crucified on Friday morning. These are the last words that Jesus has with his disciples before he is going to go to the cross and be crucified. And so he is teaching them some things. And Jesus says something in John chapter 16 very similar to what he has said to them earlier in the night. He says something in John chapter 16 very similar to what he said in John chapter 13 in verse 7. Look at John chapter 16 and verse 12. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and will declare to you the things that are to come. Look again at verse 12. Doesn't that sound like chapter 13 and verse 7? I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Literally, the idea is... I want to tell you some things, guys. I want to tell you some things, but they're too heavy for you to carry right now. You see, Jesus had some things he wanted to tell his disciples, but he couldn't because they could not bear them, because they could not understand them. There are some things that the disciples were not ready to bear. And so here's what he says he's going to do. They cannot take in all that Jesus had to reveal. You see, there was still a now and an afterward in their life. So Jesus said, here's what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is going to come and and, and look at John chapter 16, verse 13. When the Holy Spirit comes, He will guide you into all the truth. Into the truth you can't bear now. The Holy Spirit will, though, guide you into that truth. So here's the next idea of how we live in the now. To understand the afterward, live in the now, be guided by the Spirit. Be guided by the Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is to become our teacher. The Holy Spirit will become your teacher. He will teach you the truths that you need to know, when you need to know them, and when you are ready to receive them. The Holy Spirit will teach those. As you are able to bear the truth. He will show you the truth as you are able to bear it. Now, notice in the last phrase of verse 13, it says, He will declare to you the things that are to come. There is truth you will learn from the Holy Spirit. There is truth you will learn from the Holy Spirit about the days to come. So in the meantime, in the now, we must be guided by the Spirit. One function of the Holy Spirit in your life is to guide you, to lead you. 
One man said that the Holy Spirit does not drive you, he leads you. You drive cattle, you lead sheep. That's a whole nother sermon, though, okay? That's, that's a whole nother sermon. But the point here is that in your life, the Holy Spirit leads. In your life, the Holy Spirit guides. He, he guides you into the truth of God. He influences your mind in the ways of God. He, he whispers into your ears the will of the Father. The word guide always implies a journey. The word guide always means there is a process. You're going from point A to point B. You are not there yet. We haven't arrived yet, but we will get there. We don't know it all yet, but we will one day. And the reason is we have a guide, the Holy Spirit. To understand the afterward, live in the now, be guided by the Spirit. Now, notice that the Spirit guides us into all the truth. Verse 13 says that He will guide you into all the truth. Now, there's a couple of things here to notice. The first thing, would you notice is that the Spirit does not speak about Himself or from Himself? He will only speak what he hears God the Father speak to him. The Holy Spirit sort of just relays the message. That's what verse 13 means when it says, for he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. The Holy Spirit just hears what the Father is saying. He hears what the Father wants to say to you, and he just relays the message into your life. He speaks the Father's message into your heart and into your mind. He relays the message. Notice something else, though, here. Truth is not man's discovery. Truth is revealed. It is God's gift. Truth is not something that man creates. It's something that man discovers. Truth is already there, waiting for, you to be dis waiting for it to be discovered when the Holy Spirit speaks into your life. Truth is there, waiting for you to learn as you are guided by the Holy Spirit. God reveals truth. We discover truth. The Holy Spirit guides us. So, what's the message of truth that the Spirit is guiding us to in these days? What is the message of truth that, that the Spirit is guiding us in the now of COVID-19? I, I, I received another text this week. Another text message from a friend. And I think he may be on to something. I read it. Then I read it again. I think he's on to something. So I wrote it down. And I brought it with me. Listen to the text message I received from my friend today. In a span of weeks, God has taken away everything we worship in America. God said, you want to worship athletes? I'm going to shut down the arenas and the stadiums. Do you want to worship the singers and the musicians? I'm going to shut down the concert halls. You want to worship actors? I'm going to shut down the theaters. You want to worship money? I am going to shut down the economy and collapse the stock market. You don't want to go to church and worship me? I'll make it where you couldn't go to church if you wanted to. And then he said this. Most of us won't need a vaccine. But maybe we do need a time of isolation away from the distractions of this world to focus on the only thing that really matters. And that's Jesus Christ. Could it be 
that what the Spirit is guiding us into today is a time of isolation, a time when we have had all of those distractions removed from our life so that we can focus on the only thing that really matters, Jesus. In fact, that's the truth that we may need to be guided into to focus our lives or to refocus our lives on Jesus Christ. In fact, look at verse 14. John chapter 16 and verse 14 says, He will glorify me. The He is the Holy Spirit. He will glorify me for He will take what is mine and declare it to you. He will glorify me. The Holy Spirit will guide you into a life that glorifies Jesus Christ. So here's the final thing about living in the now that we need to learn. To understand the afterward, live in the now, glorify Jesus. Yes, yes, give of yourself. Yes, be guided by the Spirit. But in order to understand the afterward, we must live in the now of glorifying Jesus with our lives. The Holy Spirit's job. In fact, I I, I believe it may be the most important job. The Holy Spirit's job is to glorify Jesus. Ultimately, supremely, He is to glorify Jesus so that Jesus shows up in your life today, so that Jesus shows up in the now. The Holy Spirit will never glorify Himself. The Holy Spirit will never call attention to Himself. The supreme mission of the Spirit is to glorify Jesus. And so I ask you, does your life glorify Jesus? One true measure, or maybe it is the only true measure, the true test as to whether or not you are being guided by the Spirit is does your life glorify Jesus? The Holy Spirit wants to produce in you the life of Jesus. The Holy Spirit wants to produce in you the virtues, the characteristics of Christ. The the Holy Spirit wants you to act like Jesus. He wants Jesus to be seen and magnified in your life. Glorify, glorify Jesus. Now, I want you to do something with your two hands, okay? I, I, I want you to do something. With your left hand, I want you to cross your fingers, okay? With your left hand, cross your fingers. And with your right hand, just put up the number one sign. Really, it's a finger that points upward. Now, you are either going to live this way or this way in these days of COVID-19. You are either going to live with your fingers crossed, (laughs) And that is worrying about the circumstances, worrying about whether God is going to act, worrying about your job, King's X, I got my fingers crossed. I don't know what God's going to do, but but, but I got got my fingers crossed about it all. You're either going to live your life with your fingers crossed or you're going to live your life pointing to the one who is in control of your life. You're going to live your life with a, with a finger pointed upward that focuses everyone's attention on Jesus Christ, your Lord. You're going to live your life either with your fingers crossed or a finger pointing upward. You're going to live your life worrying or you're going to live your life worshiping your Lord and Savior. You see, we have a choice. So what will, what will it be? How are you going to live? Worrying or worshiping? Getting and thinking only about yourself or glorifying Jesus with your actions? What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward. 
you will understand. That verse still grips my heart. What I am doing, you do not understand now. But afterward, you will understand. Do you know what I believe the Lord is doing now? That afterward, we're going to understand? Do you know what I believe the Lord is doing now that later we're going to look back on and say, Oh, that's what God was up to. Here it is. Character transformation. Character transformation. God is moving in a mysterious way to develop the character of Christ in his people. To think that God would use these days, this virus, this circumstance that we find ourselves in. That God would want to use these circumstances to transform your character. Because you see, He has sent the Holy Spirit into your life to guide you and to glorify Jesus. To change you and to transform you so that you put on display in your life the characteristics, the personality of Jesus. God is up to something. And so your prayer must change. Your prayer must change from, from deliver me from these circumstances to develop in me your character. We've got to change the way we pray, church. It's not, Lord, deliver me from these circumstances. It's, Lord, develop in me your character. To understand the afterward. Live in the now. Give of yourself. Be guided by the Spirit. And glorify Jesus. And that starts, glorifying Jesus begins with a relationship with Him. Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ today? If not, you can invite Him into your life right now. It's really pretty simple. In fact, I like to say it's as simple as ABC. If you want a relationship with Jesus Christ this morning, you can admit that you are a sinner. That's the A. Admit that you have not done what God wants you to do. Admit that you've broken His laws. Admit that you are a sinner. And then believe that Jesus' death on the cross paid for those sins, forgave those sins. Believe in Jesus. Put your trust in Him. That's the B. Admit, believe, and then commit your life to Jesus Christ. Take Him. Receive Him as your Savior and your Lord. Commit your life to Jesus. Live for Him in these days. And you do that through simply a prayer where you pray to God and say, God, I admit that I'm a sinner. But I'm believing in Jesus today. And his death on the cross is payment for my sin. And I'm committing my life to him. Would you pray that prayer with me right now? Let's bow. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for a sure word in uncertain times. And I pray that all of us who know you as Lord and Savior have been challenged to walk through these days differently because we've encountered you through your word today. Now, Father, I pray for those that are listening or watching that don't know you. I pray they would come to faith in Christ today through praying a simple prayer where they admit their sin where they believe in Jesus and where they commit their life to Him. May many do so 
today, Father, who watched. And it's in Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. Thank you for watching us today. If you made a decision for Jesus Christ today, would you please reach out to us and let us know? My email address is pepper at fbcmv.com. I would love to hear that you made a decision for Christ today. Or if you have a prayer request, reach out to us as well. And again, the email address is pepper at fbcmv.com. Thank you so much for watching us today. God's best on you.